check right over here. Yep, it's up in the north. So we lose the light very fast. It's that time of year. So anyway, the next thing is to try and clean this up a bit. Start with some heavy duty stuff because I think this has actually been in some kind of a workshop environment. So it's got that kind of workshop greasy dust. So we're going to have to get aggressive. I'm cleaning this up. Started to dissolve red. Yep, if you wanted to get this perfect, then we need an ultrasonic cleaner with a really big bed. What are you doing here, shut your thing? press the earth and we push things around. A little off sauce. It's a little more. So this is now been cooking on the other side. We still get rid of the worst of the bacteria.
first. first. See the connectors we gotta get clean off. Oh. Let it sit for a while. It's been sitting for a while. And the last pass. So anyway, we're just gonna take a little interlude here because we had this um, chip that broke. And the actual pin came off. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this one. This one is broken, so non-functional. So we're actually going to. Um, use this one here as a donator of the pin. So let's see which one would be a good candidate. Of pins, so probably this man when, when I clip it off, it'll probably fly away. So, so um, <laughs> yeah, so much for that. <laughs> so, I'm going to try and cut this one off here. to actually trim this just a little bit shorter so that it doesn't jam in the socket so so let's take a little tiny bit off and make sure that it's straight so done and then you can take a ah it doesn't need to even be the exact right socket. And we're going to use this as a support. So we're going to put that in there. Like that. And then we're going to move that pin a little bit in. Maybe a bit too much. Just 
So you see it's just like, ah, oh, I don't know, I can show it on the camera. It's just that I tried to get it a little bit you know, more in than the other. So now the tricky part is to actually take this. No! As I said, risk of flying away. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show on camera, but this has to... This little thing has to go in to here. I don't know if I'll be able to do it on camera. Let's see. It doesn't, ah, look at that. And as you see, oh, I don't know if this camera, I haven't got a microscope, cam microscope camera. So, um, so now that's lined up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and solder those two together. So we clamp it in the vise. Oh, I have to heat up the... And then we're going to try and solder those two together. And the reason I'm using this donor socket is that it can burn the plastic, so I, I, I don't care about this socket. If it ruins it, it ruins it. So I'm really tricky trying to get the camera in the right position as to be able to come in with, with hands and stuff. See if I can actually do what I intend to do. Oh, it's so hard to see if that even got soldered. Oh, not easy to see, but I think I might have got it now. <sighs> Wait for it to cool down. And then we we'll see that we can separate it from. From the socket, so it has Or from all of it. I don't think the one runs the, the, the circuit for this one here where, where it's soldered internally, it's all the way over here, so I think the you know, heating this this up too much is probably you know, a relatively small risk. No one would do that. Yeah. Not sure it's oh it probably can't show very well in the, in the camera itself. See? That's nice. And then the, like the distance and things. It should be okay because it was in the, it was held in the sockets. Okay, well maybe not perfect. Oh yeah, it, c it goes up a bit because um, the way I put it and put it on there, but um, yeah, tolerant. Taking into account socket tolerances, I really think that's. That is perfect. So I would say that that's fixed. And I know this ship works. So I tested it. It was in testing prior to the poor pin coming off. It was only when I actually took it off out of the testing socket that it, that it broke. And I think it's due to the, the, the a bit of corrosion on those, those legs. So. But I think that we can use that now. And as I said, this one is um, dead, known dead uh, ship. Nothing lost on that one. So, all chips in place. I borrowed an IO chip from the Amiga 500 Plus, and then, um, yeah, then we fixed the pin for this one. And um, so, now we just got the main board and got a monitor. RGB connector is in place. And um, then it's the issue that we need something to power it with. 
and I actually don't have an Omega 2000 power supply and even if I had one I'd be if it was non-tested I would be very skeptical <laughs> it's a 30 year old power supply so um, what I have here is actually a very interesting product this is um, an ATX PC or PC ATX standard power connector motherboard power connector to Omega power connector adapter with an on off switch and um, actually this was relatively expensive and I thought first I mean why why is it so expensive oh am I gonna buy it in a moment so then I bought it and it's actually it's some um, so anyway I looked at the sales pictures and I was able to deduce that it um, has to go in the corner and the reason it's not very well um, in places that um, it, when they were crimping it then they they like crimp this the little metal uh, bits that are supposed to come or are coming out to actually so when you push it in and it clicks then it's so one side is destroyed so they actually were a bit <laughs> just when I was saying that this is so well built oh. but anyway I still like it the concept is very good sort of you know proper switch ATX connector and the other and then they've also added a nice comment here. You won't be able to read this text, but it's actually written here. Is that um, when you have the original Amiga power supply, Amiga 2000 power supply, it creates what is called a tick signal that um, synchronizes certain activities when the system is running. So um, that doesn't exist if you have a, a PC um, power supply. But there is a jumper which is called... Oh, what was it called again? Uh, J300 and that's actually here so you need to short pin 2 and 3 and then it takes the it takes the it generates the tick signal from uh, another source from the board I think it's the video signal like the cross scanning of the video signal or something so not really ever, never really been sure why Amiga has on the 2000 platform why why is there a tick signal? It doesn't, like in the Amiga 500s and stuff, there's no tick signal that comes from the power supply, so it's very it's unique to this. And why would you have both options? I'd, uh, beats me. Original design decision, 30 years ago. So anyway, this here, it's got a bridge there, and then, as you see, this has a holder there, so it needs to plug into here. And actually not that easy to take out again. So, and then we have the switch. And then of course we need a power supply, so I actually cables uh, okay, catching on other cables. I actually got one of these these power supplies. Um, Standard ATX power supply um, off. Uh, has these mustard cables, very classical. Ah, it's got all messed up. Anyway, here. The, the, it's. Oh, not that one. Okay, that's actually. Ah, okay, for its uh, extra for the processor. Uh, but actually, it only needs this um, this end here, this connector, and then that um, goes in here. Also, there's a notch there. There's the holder there. You can't get this the wrong way around. I'm just going to make sure that that cable goes in there properly. So we need to have some. Some power for this. Oh, I really just have to make sure that that doesn't fall on the motherboard because it's got no bits all over. So, and it's in, it's out, so now it should be off. Uh, oops. Kind of ready. That does not 
the line on top of them. And the board, so I've got the cables hanging down there, and that's over there, that's connected there. The monitor on. So, so, place your bets if this is going to start in any way, or is there going to be smoke, or you don't know. Even this could smoke. I'm, but I do know that the power supply works because I was actually using it on one PC. So. so that's the power supply now on. So let's be prepared to to pull the power if something horrible happens. Okay. Just gonna be ready to pull the power main mains out of. I'd actually would be very surprised if we get any kind of picture. Okay, no smoke. Still looking for smoke. That's the thing the one is most concerned about, that there's an actual explicit short circuit. Now this would stop also if there's a power short circuit somewhere. So this is a normal PC power supply, so it will um, actually give up. No, doesn't seem to be any any kind of a video signal. Processors heating up, and now one has to be careful when one's actually trying because I haven't got a thermal camera, so one actually has to be a bit um, scart or GB. It actually synced to that. Okay, but anyway, no picture. I, I'm not that surprised. Uh, I can see no smoke. <laughs> nope. Okay, so I, I think we're electrically somewhat safe. And as I said, I might burn my finger doing this. Just as a warning. These old sir, TTL circuits, if they're actually, they can actually burn. I've even seen them getting uh, red hot. Really have to be a bit careful. That's why it would be so nice to have a thermal camera, but I actually don't have one. You can also see discolorations on the chips if they get too hot. Now the IO chip is not getting hot. This one here, which I tested. Oh, you, if you watched my previous video, I actually cross tested. Um, some of these chips and then it was found out that one of the IO chips was getting very hot but that's not getting hot so anyway um, not that negative um, I can feel that the processor is getting hot but that's okay you know certain chips they get hot so I'm not too um, concerned around again and this is as I said it's first power up it looks okay so I'm going to turn it off and let's see if we what we get the next boot up sequence and as I said I have no history for this board it's it's sold was sold to me untested so there's no, absolutely no clue what they had experienced but obviously they were experiencing something because they were trying to fix it well that's a positive sign that the processor is at least trying to do it there's no no RGB of any kind I'll be back. I'm going to do a little bit of investigation and be back and see what I find. So, anyway, the first thing I actually intend to do is I'm going to remove the ROM and I have actually. 
actually in my possession. A little bit of an interesting chip. And that is an Amiga diagnostic rod. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to insert this the right way around, has to double check. I don't I don't expect this to produce any kind of a picture, but since I have a diagnostics wrong then why not? Why not try? It's like a ROM on a socket, which goes into a socket, so I have to be extra careful to see that that actually goes in. Okay. So, so let's see if we get anything now. And it definitely thinks that it's producing an RGB signal. Investigations will continue. So, moving on with <coughs> diagnostics. So, what's worth testing is to actually not use RGB. So, we'll take that away. And then you use a. Now, this is supposed to be video and right left audio, but the only thing we're going to connect in this video is this yellow one. So, that'll give you monochrome video. And the thing is that this bypasses this RGB. So, so if it's otherwise working and um, the RGB is bust, then we'll get a picture. Uh, so let's see what happens. If anything. Oh, right. Um, no load, I think. That's raw video. I think that's raw video because it would say scarred video. If it wasn't. So looks like we don't get a picture there either. So anyway.
pocket for fat lady is empty. And, uh, the reason for that is that um, it was um, 180 degrees the wrong way around in the socket. Um, so that I'd actually made the mistake myself because I did take it out and put some contact cleaner and cleaned it a bit and then inserted it back the same way it was and then when I was doing some investigations then I actually um, stumbled on the fact that it's the wrong way around and um, you can actually see that now that the board is clean you will, might not be able to see it in the camera but right next to the socket right down there there's a number one and that's the first pinch and if you take this chip then we oh, I wonder if I can show it but you see it's got a little bit of one of the edges is a bit more like cut down so it's got a bevel on it and then the number one pin is marked the little intendation on the chip so it's uh, how does this not have that? No, it's there. Oh, it's so small. Oh, okay, so they're very small on this specific. Oh, I won't be able to show. But anyway, there's a little tiny dimple there, a little bit of a cutout in addition to this bell, and that's the number one. So this this has to be inserted this way around. And it was actually sitting that way around. And um, I actually then when when this happened, I thought, ah, you know, I, I took it out and then cleaned it up and then I put the, put it back in, powered up. But I put it back in the wrong way around and powered it up. And then it's my fault. But then I suddenly realised I do have pictures of this board. Um, you know the the product as photographed when it was being sold, and I actually went back to them and um, uh, surprise, surprise, the um, well, it was actually the wrong way around <laughs> already from day one. So, uh, but I, I I didn't sadly I didn't consider to. Uh, yeah, I, I must admittedly I did check the the these main chips, but I didn't really think that the, or even consider it was likely that this was, of course physically speaking the sad thing is that these chips you can put them, uh, you can put them anyway, any way around, there's, there's no real physical resistance to inserting these chips, uh, however, <laughs> however round you are. Um, however though when you do that then um, um, this probably means that this fat lady chip in, in most likelihood is dead and then it's of course the sad thing is that that might have had side effects or other things has it killed um, I don't think it's been killing any of the main chips because those were those I cross tested with another board or Omega 500 classic board uh, or no, I think I did it on my Amiga 500 plus, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So it, it might be some uh, of the TTL chips um, that could be could be um, damaged by this kind of procedure. But anyway, I have to um, have to consider the strategy for moving forward as to what um, what I will do. So um, if you want to stay posted, then consider subscribing. Um, hit the bell icon. Keep following the channel. I'll be back with a plan of, or, yeah, a continuation of in one way or the other. We'll see. Well, now I need a break. <laughs>